Hello, we are here today with Professor Tako Kamibepo of the Faculty of Liberal Arts for Global Studies and Leadership at the Tokyo Sugar Khan College. Professor Takao, we have invited you because of your expertise in the field of internationalization of higher education and your knowledge about international policy making. We have around five questions for you mm -hmm. to lead you around. My first question for you would be, what would you consider are the key trends in higher education for the world today? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's a very uh, good question. Then I don't, I don't say probably a regular term like internationalization, global mobility, but I won't say a little bit a cynical way. I think there's a trend to create trends in the world, which means that there's a internationalization, like a stu student mobility, uh, education hub, those kind of things. So sounds like there's some uh, regime of the uh, that uh, students. It's good that the students is mobile. It's good that the English or international activities are good. There's some a uh, little bit uh, regime is there. So, but uh, also there's some uh, uh, trend is more like a div uh, convergence. Many systems should be a little similar or keeping some diversity, of course, but uh, try to be similar each other so that uh, people benefit, especially students who can move around different systems easily. But uh, I feel sometimes just this kind of regime sometimes uh, too strong, sometimes, because I don't know who creates uh, trends, because I feel sometimes, some, somebody said in a paper, uh, trends are created to benefit the stakeholders to which who creates uh, trends. So maybe trends go back to the stakeholder. So I'm just wondering, who will be left behind from this kind of trend making, maybe agenda set setting. So I think uh, not, not only like a, a convergence, we should think about uh, divergence, still like a d uh, sensitivity to the diversity is also important to think about. Thank you so much. And now if you compare what you explained now to the context of your own country, mm -hmm. are there similarities or differences? Yes, in case of those uh, more global mobi mobility, uh, student mobility, internationalization, English medium instructions. Still, uh, it's very big uh, topic in Japan, in government uh, universities. But uh, I want to say it's very still um, target university is very at the top elite university because I'm 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 from uh, not elite university. So when I look at the government documents, like uh, leaders discussing glo globalization. My students uh, have not so much in common. So, but the top elite university students are only like a five or ten percent of the total across uh, the eight hundred uh, universities in Japan. So, this kind of a very elitist discussion about the international mobility is only benefits small uh, uh, portion in Japan, for example. Also, sometimes this kind of mobility, uh, if you have a good international experience, in rational sense. I think those should be rewarded by a good job, those kind of things. But in Japan, sometimes opposite. If you have uh, too much international experience, or if you have a double degree, for example, or master's or PhD from inside outside Japan, very difficult to get a job in a company because company want to um, train you, uh, mend you to fit the company's culture. So it's better not to have uh, extra experience, such as international mobility. So that's a little bit uh, peculiar to Japan against the Jap uh, international trend. So that's really interesting. So <laughs> there are the differences. We are both working in the European Commission funded project mm -hmm. universities in the knowledge economy. Mm -hmm. And we're interested in ways how universities are being enrolled and to produce knowledge mm -hmm. and how workers in this econ economy are produced. Mm -hmm. Would there be something yet that you see happening in the context which you're working in? What the changes, what these changes mean for the idea of university as we know it? Mm -hmm. So, in, ca in, in the context of Japan, which uh, I know well, discussion has been uh, maybe recent five or ten years that uh, students, uh, universities are not uh, preparing students enough for the industry or for the employers. But uh, this kind of voice from industry has been heard so many years. But uh, because, as I mentioned, I companies want to change the new employee anyway to fit their co corporate culture, 
company didn't expect much to the uh, universities. So university was sometime 20 years ago, it's called le leisure, leisure land, so the student can do a part-time job, you know, hobby, uh, club activities, like uh, maybe, you know, fun, having fun for four years. So which kind of a uh, socialization? You, uh, if you spend four years to, to be a good person outside the campus by uh, doing this, that kind of activity. So, but the reason to read more voices, university has to educate, give a good knowledge, skilled attitude. So that's very uh, big voice, uh, voice is getting bigger. But uh, because that's traditional uh, relationship, university and the industry, universities try to give more strict uh, grading, for example. But uh, st students know that uh, those GPA or grades are not so much important to get the job in the company. So university say, uh, com industry says to the university, please give a better quality education, but uh, because the students know the reality, be, you know, be, you know, under the, under the uh, formal talking, we have faculty at the universities um, cannot do so much strict way. So a little bit uh, uh, dilemma about the knowledge production at the university. And I would continue mm -hmm. um, to the next question because yes. your previous answer really gave me some uh, food for thought. Mm -hmm. I think Asia is very diverse. Yes. Um, therefore, I would like to um, ask you what you think is the most positive um, outcome of the recent change to higher education in the developed countries mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and developing countries mm -hmm. in Asia. Mm -hmm. Can you give some example? Of okay. Yeah, example is that uh, because Asia is a, a fast growing economy, uh, like leading the uh, world economy, especially. Uh, I think many like middle income uh, groups are emerging in Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, of course Malaysia, Singapore, but uh, many, uh, even Myanmar is opening the country. Uh, many uh, uh, people who didn't have experience, who didn't have a chance before, have getting uh, opportunity to go, go uh, to choose uh, the more, more options, uh, including uh, study abroad or sh short term degree seeking. I think a recent trend is more like uh, uh, students can have uh, more options because recent uh, uh, econo economic development, which is very good for the uh, low income or middle income uh, ASEAN countries, for example. But in case of, uh, oh, I should say positive. But so in case of Japan too, uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, government in Japan is pushing internationalization, so which means students who have been hesitant to go abroad because some, um, I don't know, maybe Japan is too comfortable for them, but uh, government is giving them that the world is changing. You know, ASEAN countries, students more going out, so why not the Japanese students? So Japanese students also get uh, stimulus from those emerging countries, emerging middle class. So that's a very uh, good positive, kind of stimulating each other because more information uh, shared, more opportunities are given to the students. That's a very good thing. Thank you. And to follow up this question, I have um, recently read your papers. Thank you. um, in uh, that paper, you analyze the influences of the Bologna process mm -hmm. in Europe on um, the internationalization mm -hmm. of higher education in Japan. Yes. Uh, could you please tell us more about how these influences mm -hmm. uh, have changed the landscape of higher education in mm -hmm. Japan? Mm -hmm. um, and what, uh, what role uh, does Japan plays in regional higher education in Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I mentioned, that uh, Japan tried to internationalize uh, because so many reasons. Like uh, they want to have uh, more universities in the top hundred uh, ranking, international ranking system, or uh, they want to have more international students to augment the shrinking uh, student population, or they want to because shrinking population we we need more like uh, international uh, talented workforce. For example, I think a Bologna process give us Japan is many uh, good inspirations, many hints about what uh, Japanese higher education community should do. Uh, I think one is more domestic uh, thing, another one is more re regional thing. Domestically, I think Bologna process gives idea that uh, moving, as I mentioned, student mobility would enrich students, um, uh, how to say, uh, college life in terms of acquiring new knowledge, uh, skills, attitude. Also, uh, exposure to diversity is very good. And regionally, as you mentioned, the leadership is, Japan 
I think uh, Japan belongs to East Asia. So now Japan is working with China, uh, Republic of Korea, no, uh, South Korea, and uh, three countries is called uh, Campus Asia. So that's uh, one uh, group of the student mobility. Then also Japan is a member of the ASEAN. It's called the AIMS. Uh, six countries in East ASEAN is try to, uh, um, how to say, uh, move students around in the exchange. Then because Japan want to be uh, part of the East Asia, also part of e uh, Southeast Asia, but the Japan is not member. But uh, Japan, Japanese companies have many uh, factories, many uh, companies in Southeast Asia. So Japanese uh, industry pushed the Japanese Ministry of Education to have more, uh, sending more Japanese students to the Southeast Asia, and then uh, inviting more students to Japan from Southeast Asia. So that's uh, uh, that, that's one inspiration that Bologna process gave. So it's more, Bologna process is more, how to say, um, I think not, not a particular uh, way of Bologna process, but the Bologna's, uh, Bologna spirit is kind of good uh, inspiration. So Japan can do, um, cultivate its own role in the Asia and Pacific. Thank you very much oh, for welcome. taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you.